Um, oh. So uh, my name is Mariam Durrani. I teach in uh, the School of International Service in the International and Intercultural Communication Program. Um, my PhD, it's a joint PhD in anthropology and education. And in both fields, I focused on linguistic anthropology and educational linguistics. <clears throat> so that really, I think, shapes how I have used this assignment. Um, and I just wanted to kind of give that context as I get into the slides. And so um, I put this um, graphic. There's not a lot of graphics. I was really hoping to add more graphics, but I didn't add too many. But I, I put this one in there and I titled the presentation, uh, Don't Forget Your Exit Tickets, because um, that is oftentimes the most challenging aspect of this assignment is students forgetting to send in their exit tickets. Um, so so that's just kind of like stating it up front and that, that's part of uh, what I hope students kind of build over the semester. Um, so going to the next slide. Um, I just wanted to restate uh, the learning outcomes as um, they had been listed on the uh, workshop information page. So I'm going to describe the exit ticket assignment. Um, hopefully by the end of it, you'll be able to describe the exit ticket assignment. We'll discuss uh, applied examples from courses that I've taught at SIS. Um, you'll get a chance to experience uh, the exit ticket, and then I will uh, demonstrate how I use it through your exit tickets today. So uh, keep that in mind that there will be a quiz at the end. Um, not really. but um, And then lastly, I wanted to ask how you might uh, use this assignment in your classes. And so um, we'll get to that at the, at the very end. Um, so our agenda for today, it's a very detailed agenda, but this is more, I think, for me. So just for what you need to know is there's going to be three parts to this workshop today. The first part is more of an introduction to the work to the exit ticket. And I try to give a perspective from the student's point of view and then from my point of view and then talk through some of like that introductory uh, kind of setting up what is the exit ticket. Then I explain kind of examples from my exit from my courses and explain my reasons for using it. And then we'll have a discussion at the end of both of those parts. And then there will be an opportunity for you to send in your exit ticket, which will have a, a 15 minute break at which point I'll kind of process what you send in to me. And then we'll use that for the third part to kind of uh, experience it and discuss it further. So now coming back to part one, we want to kind of think about the, the perspectives um, of from the students' perspectives, the faculty perspective, and then uh, a couple of examples. So this is kind of what students receive when they, um, in their syllabus. In the syllabus, I kind of list all the assignments. And the first assignment is the exit ticket assignment, which they'll actually do after the very first day. Um, so the exit ticket is, is as follows. After class, they, they answer two questions. One question is, what have you learned today? In their own words, they will summarize one or two points from the class period. And the second question is, what are you more curious about? And that's where they pose a question or comment that connects to that day's uh, class conversation and that will help us kind of generate discussion in the next period. I also give a couple of um, examples, just so that way they don't kind of uh, approach it the way that, you know, just a, any question to ask, but a question that will kind of think about the readings that we've been uh, talking about in class, extends something that we've talked about in class, or compares something that we're reading in class with something outside of class, etc. And I also explain the purpose of the assignment in the syllabus. And so the purpose, as I lay it out for them, is it gives an opportunity to reflect on what they've just learned, it gives um, me a sense of how the class has understood that day's material. And then in a practical sense, it counts for attendance and participation. And I um, have this uh, kind of last piece as, as kind of like the most kind of functional aspect of it in the sense of I understand that students, sometimes they participate in class and like to speak and other students don't like to speak in class. And so the exit ticket provides an opportunity for everyone to kind of share with me and build a relationship with me one on one on how they're processing course material. And then the next period usually is when they get to see how that comment fits in with what other students in the class are saying. And there's a, a lot of ways that I think as I've done the exit ticket assignment in every single class, I've really seen how it suits um, students and in their learning journey at, in different ways. And so I can talk about that as we get into it. So just kind of, you know, from the student's perspective, this is what they receive in terms of instructions and guidelines on how to do this assignment. 
from my perspective, from the faculty point of view, um, I see this as a very useful way to, to follow student learning. And following student learning in a couple of different ways, um, over, <clears throat> over from one week to the second week, over the course, uh, over one you know, semester course, over um, multiple semesters in terms of kind of seeing how students are picking up information, how they respond to that same reading over several semesters, if I need to change readings, if I need to add something. So these are kind of ways that I develop that over time. And I also wanted to share a little bit about the course that I teach. Um, I'm going to be primarily pulling examples from my undergraduate course, which is um, right now I'm teaching uh, SIS undergrad uh, 205, which is intercultural communication, and it's a required course um, for uh, SIS majors. And so I wanted to include the um, kind of semester layout on the right hand side where there's three modules. The first module we focus on kind of defining terms and Having, developing a shared vocabulary in the class. The second module, we read more about kind of history, communication, and power in relationship to this topic. And then the last one, we have a couple of weeks where I, I, I choose particular themes that we read about in relationship to what we've been reading the, the, the um, first part of the semester. Um, I've also included on this slide the course learning assessments that I use. And so as you can see, um, daily exit tickets count for 25% of their final grade. So they understand early on that this is an extremely important part of their um, you know, participation in the course. And then there's you know, other assignments. And I also wanted to include the last assignment that I have for this undergrad course, which is uh, you know, formally the learning journey reflection essay, but informally I call it the final exit ticket because that's kind of where they assess their entire kind of semester's uh, work and, and kind of explain it to me. And so, as you can see, there's a lot um, in the grading that I've tried to kind of build as a quicker way for me to grade and give feedback while at the same time not, um, not shortchanging them in terms of my engagement with their, their ideas and as they're developing over the semester. The other thing about this assignment is that typically, I think, um, in my own experience as a student, you know, uh, university kind of uh, assessments are often very summative in the sense of you, you know, participate throughout the semester, but in the end, you turn in this final paper that's worth like a very big chunk of your grade. And there is still that component in, in this course. But the daily exit ticket assignment allows for um, this kind of engaged learning throughout the semester such that I can see how they're developing their, their ideas. And we can have those conversations one on one. Um, when we meet for office hours. And I, as you can see, I've also made office hours required because I have found that to be one of the ways to make sure that I have a one on one conversation with every student and not just the students that are really, you know, um, uh, eager to kind of meet with the professor and the students who kind of don't necessarily make that a priority. Um, and I also actually asked them to do that in the first few weeks of the semester. So just to kind of like explain how I try to engage students from a pedagogical perspective in terms of the assessments in the course and, and kind of really build that culture um, through the through the assessments themselves. Um, and so I want to walk through kind of like the two steps. It's just two steps in terms of what we actually do. Oops, sorry, um, what the exit ticket assignment actually means from on a week to week basis. And so, as you can see here, these are two exit tickets that students sent in. Um, they can take many different forms. I don't have like a template, although sometimes what happens is students develop their own template in terms of how they want to respond. Sometimes it's paragraph form, sometimes it's like a numbered list. Um, but as you can see, uh, they kind of, you know, tell me what was the most meaningful part of that day's discussion. And, and these two exit tickets both are actually talking about a specific student presentation that we had um, about Girl Scout cookies and the way that they um, talk about their cookies being sustainable. And then she kind of interrogates the supply chain of Girl Scout cookies to kind of show how they're using sustainable, but actually there's a lot of other things going on with the assignment, or sorry, with the, with the issue. Um, and as you can see over here on the second uh, part, so the first part is kind of, you know, what have you learned? And then the second thing is what you're more curious about. And so this one, you know, uh, there's a question specifically about a reading. And so then the following week, I brought that reading back into um, my slides and talked about what I meant. Um, this was actually a reading that I had written um, about um, child refugees and kind of the migration crisis in Europe. 
um, and the way that images were used uh, to kind of convey um, what was happening. And so this became a really interesting, I think, uh, example of, of how the students are kind of like picking up things that were discussed and then helping me connect that next week to other issues that we're talking about. Um, all right, so I'm going to go now to the next slide. So the first step is students email their exit tickets. And so at the end of today's, uh, when we get to like the third part, you all will be doing the same thing of emailing me one thing that you've learned and one thing that you're more curious about. Then what I do is I take all of the emails before the next class, I take their emails and I copy paste um, their exit tickets anonymously onto blank slides. Um, except for when they might be referencing a peer's presentation or something that was said in the previous class. I make sure to not bring in anything, of course, that's more pointedly personal. It remains at the level of course topics that we've been discussing. Um, and so here you'll see, um, and then after I kind of like copy paste, I arrange them and rearrange them. And that's kind of my own um, my own kind of coding process, as I, I said it on the top, on the on this uh, title, I arrange slash code. And I actually do think there's a way that this <clears throat> exercise becomes a kind of weekly discourse analysis to keep track of like how students are processing information. And then, you know, the code might be, for example, here, climate, where I put climate at the top. And these were all um, exit tickets that were asking various questions about the climate change readings that we had had that week. On the bottom right, you'll see that these are a number of exit tickets where a number of students ask questions about Delaney's presentation about Girl Scout cookies. And that also becomes an interesting way for students to see how their peers have, um, you know, what, what their, their uh, colleagues kind of takeaway is from the things that they presented. And I think it also gives a, a great confidence boost to students to see kind of how their presentation um, you know, led to learning uh, in the class for others and, and then also kind of developing those ideas further. Um, and as you can see over here uh, on the bottom one, one of the students responds that, you know, she was herself a former Girl Scout and participated in selling Girl Scout cookies. And so it becomes again, another way to build uh, an inclusive kind of conversation around course topics and let students kind of connect to it individually, how, how they see, how they feel most connected to it. Um, so then um, on this slide, I wanted to share um, a couple of, uh, you know, snapshots. And so, as I said before, I actually, you know, explain this assignment on the first day of class when I give the syllabus and I wanted to bring in three uh, different first day snapshots. So this is from my undergrad course. And as you can see on this slide, um, you have uh, kind of students kind of understanding conceptually what the course is gonna be about and this emphasis on intercultural communication. Um, on the bottom right, you can see that they emphasize that they saw that you know they need to come to office hours and that it's mandatory. And so that's again, good for me to know that they they pick that up and, and you know, um, that information is getting through. And then over here on the left, um, I actually put uh, political cartoons into the syllabus. And on the first day, we analyze a series of those uh, political cartoons together to kind of think about how students, you know, read a, a political cartoon and have their kind of first level reading of it and then kind of try to glean more um, deeper meanings that are coming out of that particular cartoon. And so this, again, helps us start building that conversation from the first day. The next um, snapshot that I have is from uh, the course uh, International Communication. So this is a graduate course. Um, and as you can see over here, like, you know, some of the students uh, pulled out one of the quotes that I talked about from a reading that will actually be coming up, um, you know, in that course. Um, let's see. Um, I think you can see on the left hand side, uh, they kind of analyze how we we're talking about words in the class. And so they're immediately kind of taking like a meta linguistic uh, analysis of, of, of how we're going to talk about terms. Um, and again, it might be that there's something to kind of connect to what we're talking about today, but other times it's actually just important to kind of recognize that these are the perspectives that were represented from the last week and now moving forward, um, you know, we're going to develop those further. And then this last um, slide I have here is first day snapshots from um, this course, graduate course I teach called Global Equity and Inclusion. And so on the first day of that course, I talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and, you know, 
DEI, and then I try to use DEI as a foil to kind of think through GEI. And so you can see um, some of the students start kind of picking up that language. And again, I can start to see how they're how they're kind of processing what we're talking about. Um, and so now I wanted to come to kind of thinking about exit tickets as a kind of student-centered uh, pedagogy. And so there's, again, a lot on this slide. So first, I'm going to kind of talk through a couple of points, and then I'll refer to things on the slide. Um, you know, the most important things about uh, creating kind of student-centered pedagogy is to really kind of center student learning and center how um, students learning can actually influence and shape the pace of the of the you know, larger classroom conversation, that it can, um, you know, emphasize uh, highlighting particular content or material that we've covered. And ultimately, it's about thinking of learning as a process and not a product, and making sure that student input is going into how we're thinking about the process. And so this is one student's exit tickets from this semester in my undergrad course. And I also put the learning outcomes here on the left-hand side. And so, as I said before, the intercultural communication course fulfills a diversity and equity requirement. Um, and it also has particular uh, course specific learning outcomes. And across these learning outcomes, the important thing is that they are learning how to develop um, an analytical approach approach, thinking about inequality, particularly around communication. Um, and so as you can see, I'm going to start with week two, go to week seven, and then go to the final exit ticket. Week two, the student kind of highlights that they learned about this concept that we discussed that day on digital blackface. Um, and then kind of thinking about how do we approach cultural appreciation or appropriation. The next week, the student is kind of now developing their, their learn, or sorry, week seven, they're developing. So this is five weeks later. Um, they're now kind of starting to think about uh, the way that um, languages are uh, labeled endangered and how that kind of labeling is, is giving us kind of information about um, how the language is being centered as the, the people who speak that language is not. And so this, again, connects directly back to the learning outcomes, which focus on understanding how legacies or experiences of oppression um, are discussed and how people respond to them, right? So this particular analysis or this critique of using that, that word endangered um, is something that the student is now kind of picking up. And then the last uh, uh, thing that I'm seeing here from the same student is where they're now kind of demonstrating their metacognition around their learning over the semester and seeing how this one very simple assignment gives us so much information, right? So they talk about how when I look back at my exit tickets, a lot of them began with I never knew. And so they're highlighting how they, you know, came across a lot of new information. But they go beyond that, right? Like at this point, this is the end of the semester, and they're now starting to think about um, what, do we, what are the takeaways from the course and, and taking this particular approach to looking at kind of uh, inequality? And they talk about how, um, you know, this lesson for them taught about the importance of looking at world issues in a both and rather an either or approach, which is something I highlight over the semester in, in a number of different ways. Um, but it shows again how student learning is kind of center central to how I kind of try to develop a class specific discussion about um, historical kind of like inequalities, systemic inequalities, and how do we kind of build a more equitable and just society. And so that th those outcomes or those kind of like, you know, course uh, goals shape how each of these moments plays out, but it builds. And that's kind of like the other wonderful thing about this assignment is that it is very processual and it, you can really see at an individual student level, at the class kind of like level, and then more broadly, like across semesters, how uh, students are picking up information and processing it and using it in their own words and, and examples. Um, so now I'm gonna turn to um, kind of exit tickets as a kind of inclusive and critical pedagogy. And so on this page, um, I tried to kind of address a couple of things which I think are really central <clears throat> to teaching at this historical moment. Um, on the left, I have, uh, you know, a, a quote from uh, the AU DEI website, um, which specifically talks about how AU needs to be or, or cannot be a truly inclusive, um, you know, uh, campus environment without taking concrete specific steps to improve our campus climate. 
And so I just wanted to say that although I think this is an important claim, this claim is currently in dispute given the multiple statements um, by students, faculty, and staff um, when it comes to anti-Muslim, anti-Arab, and anti-Palestinian racism on campus. And so I think that in a lot of ways, unfortunately, educational institutions are falling short of this, this very important goal. Um, but the exit ticket as an assignment, as a pedagogy, is both inclusive and critical. And I wanted to kind of go over that a little bit um, in detail. So first, it is inclusive because all students' perspectives are seen as valuable to class or group learning. But actually, what the assignment does is that it places student perspectives in a collective kind of like, um, what's the word, uh, kind of data set in a way, right? Like it's a larger data set. It's not just kind of the individual students kind of like development. And that really helps them see themselves as part of a community of learners. And then they're able to actually kind of hold each other accountable when, when something doesn't go the way that they uh, expected it to in the, through the exit ticket assignment. Um, it's critical because uh, it asks, it encourages all students to question, critique, and challenge any and all power structures that are relevant to the topic. And that can mean power structures in the broader world, power structures on campus, power structures in the classroom, right? Because there there, there's a way for them to like directly ask me, what did you mean by this? Or how do you understand the way that you, you know, describe this? I don't agree with that. And so that opens up space for me to bring that into the next class as, as, a, as a discussion topic. And the very last thing I say here is that, you know, it's inclusive and critical. Unfortunately, the way the word inclusion and inclusive circulates, it has come to kind of mean that um, everyone is, is part of the conversation. But the important kind of, you know, um, context that's needed to understand the word inclusion is that it really picks up in the United States, specifically in the 20th century, as there is a massive push to kind of, you know, redesign or rewrite policies and, and practices that have historically excluded and discriminated against particular people based on their race, gender, ability, and sexuality or our identity. And I think that piece of it means that anytime we're talking about inclusion or inclusivity, we're actually talking about these systemic issues. However, because of the way that the term circulates, I have added critical because I think that we need to emphasize that what it means to be critical means to actually question um, you know, power structures that maintain a status quo that allows for inequality. And so there is, again, like a larger point that can be made about you know, um, institutions and how institutions have an obligation to address issues of discrimination and exclusion and the way that within the classroom, even sometimes when the in institution is not doing that work, the classroom provides a space for uh, the faculty member, for the you know professor and the students in that classroom to develop that further and to, to kind of um, unpack the ways that inclusion is used more broadly and how we can actually kind of like make sure that it's it's doing this particular work of addressing, uh, um, you know, historic kind of inequalities um, and systemic inequalities that persist. Um, so I'm going to uh, take a break here and I'd like to kind of have our first discussion. So I have three um, guiding questions for the first discussion. The first is, what is your understanding of the exit ticket assignment um, based on what we've discussed so far? Um, and what questions and or concerns would you have in using this assignment and any other thoughts that you might have? So I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen now. Um, and then um, we could uh, break up into groups or we can uh, have um, a, a large group discussion. And so I'm going to actually ask you all, what would you prefer? Should we do? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I Well, I missed... I came in just like two minutes, I guess, late. So I don't actually know what the exit ticket assignment is. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> so I'll just ask that. Right, okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, is there anybody else who has any questions? I can review um, the slides again, if that's uh, if there's more people who would like that. Yes, Michelle. Hi, thank you, Mariam. This is really helpful. Uh, my question is, how do you actually grade them? Is it like uh, five points, 10 points? And how many students do you have in the entire class? 
So I, I usually do it as a two points and it's two points as in like, um, if you, it's pass fail. So if you do it, you get the two points. Um, and I, in my undergrad class, I think the cap is 19. So it's typically around 19 students. It's, it's a little challenging when I'm teaching multiple sections of the same class and I'm a term faculty member. So I teach three, three, so it can be, you know, um, a lot, but at the same time, I think it, it provides a lot of really good information. So um, I've, I've found it to be very useful. Yeah, I asked because I have 48 students in the class and I could just imagine the workload of grading all of them. Um, what do you do about student absences? Like if they miss this particular day, can they make up for that? Or do you drop the lowest one? Like what's your strategy on that? So I've because the exit ticket is most useful from the perspective of... Um, me having it before the next class, having a makeup after the next class is not very helpful in terms of what I use the exit ticket for. But if they are going to miss a class and they can miss a class because, you know, they're not well or they have another commitment, whatever it may be, I just ask them to send in an exit ticket based on the readings for that week. And that way they are still contributing. And in some ways, like those students focus exclusively on the on the readings and so they write about the readings and other students write more often about like class discussion and so it kind of still fits into to the next week in terms of like helping us develop those those conversations um i'm just going to do a quick check-in in terms of other folks who didn't get a chance to see the beginning of the presentation so i can go over a couple of those slides before we move on to the next part rebecca um, I did catch the beginning of the presentation, so I'm not part of that, but just actually kind of coming off of Michelle's question, um, I wonder how you handle the exit tickets for students who might add late, like in those first two weeks of classes, how does that work in terms of contributing to the final grade? Yeah, I mean, I think when they when they're not there for the first week or two, I usually drop one exit ticket over the semester anyways, just because Again, it's not so much about the points, it's more about how the, the assignment helps to build this conversation. And so I also have a very um, kind of like um, open, kind of like ungrading approach to, to grades. And so I can talk about that a little bit more. I talk about that later on in the workshop, but this kind of allows it to not be based on um, uh, this particular way of like giving points, but more of again understanding: Are you are you processing the information? Can you demonstrate that to me? When we have office hours, if I don't see that, then I might refer to their exit ticket and say, "Hey, like I see that you're not really writing a lot in your exit tickets. Can you tell me what's going on? I'd like to see a little bit more from you." And so it's not so much kind of like a I, I'm I'm hesitant to use this word, even though I I don't think that's what anybody is suggesting, but that kind of like punitive approach to grading where like if you don't do something that there's a punishment or something it's more about I need you to do this assignment let's figure out a way for you to be doing this assignment regularly because it provides so much important information as as the the course develops um yeah Anna yeah thank you so much Maria this has been really interesting so I, I just want to follow up on Michelle's question also because I teach a class that is typically 39 40 students do you have recommendations or have you seen other examples of um, how this can be modified or um, do you recommend keeping it, you know, to smaller classes? What do you, what's yeah. your take on that? Um, so I th thank you so much. I mean, I think that's a really important question and it's a little bit hard to answer because <clears throat> I always think that they're going to send in like one or two sentences and then they send in like four paragraphs <laughs> as like a regular thing. Right. And so if that's happening and it's a very large class, then I would be selective. Then I wouldn't copy paste the whole thing that they're sending, right? I would just take out like a few sentences and kind of use that. And that's what I've done in the past. Um, but I think it, it is, it is a, it does kind of like involve a lot of work on a weekly, weekly basis, but I do feel like at the end of the semester, I don't feel that um, stress that I used to feel in the past of like, have I gotten through to every single student? I actually know that I have. I know that they've all kind of like been telling me, you know, every week, what did they understand? What are they more curious about? And so in that way, um, I feel like that takes a little bit of pressure off of me at the end of the semester, even though during the semester, there might be, uh, you know, more time that needs to be fit in for prep. Um, Betsy? Thanks, Miriam. Um, it, I think it's a fantastic assignment. I really admire the amount of work that you put into this. I think this is what other faculty are getting at. Um, 
so I have a couple questions, which is how would this different from a discussion board? Why why call it an exit ticket as opposed to a discussion board where um which it seems to me it's the exact same thing of asking the faculty the students to engage with the material about what they uh one thing that you know intrigued them and one thing they still have a question about and um and then also I wonder I mean I really just and I also wonder why email and not canvas as a way to sort of keep track of them as somebody who has, you know, thousands of emails still unread in their email inbox is my second question. And then um, I, I, I guess I would just have one maybe answer to the questions about workload, which is when I've done this, something different but similar, I'll break them up into sort of A, B, and C, and a third of the class does it each week so that I only have to read a third. Which does it? It's not perfect. It's not everybody engaging, but there is still more inclusivity. And I just my last comment is: I love the fact that you frame it as inclusivity and engagement, as opposed to it's like I'm quizzing you on whether you've done the work or not, which is what I think some faculty use discussion board for. So I'll shut up because I'm driving. <laughs> Yeah, no, I understand. I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I mean, I think that's a very good question in terms of like, what is the difference between this and a discussion board post? And there's a, some important differences. The first is that it's anonymous with regards to what the rest of the class is able to see, right? Thing about discussion boards is that individual students post a discussion board and you know who posted it. So there's a whole conversation that can be had. And then there's a way that students will self-censor because they know that they're it's, it's visible to everyone in the class. When it comes to this assignment, it's not, right? It's only between me and the student. And so what's important is that I use it actually as an opportunity to build trust with the students such that they see, first of all, that everyone is represented every week. And they don't know that everyone is represented, but they know whether or not they were represented, right? And when they're not, if I don't, for example, I mean, in the beginning, I think when I first started doing this a couple of years ago, I used to maybe select which exit tickets to share. But over time, I've just incorporated it more and more. And so I, I think in that way, that kind of addresses the other question or concern that's been raised by a number of people, which is, this is a lot of work. I know it appears to be a lot of work, but again, from my perspective, it actually is less work in the sense of there's a greater payoff in terms of what I get from doing this assignment in this particular way, including the things that I just mentioned, which I think are really important given, you know, students are so visible online, they know they're constantly being surveilled in a lot of ways. And so this kind of builds a particular kind of relationship with students, um, which they don't immediately feel because in the first few weeks, it's still a little bit awkward sometimes. But by the end of the semester, you can really, again, like, feel how the students are looking forward to the exit ticket. They're looking forward to kind of like how that discussion is going to go that week. Um, the other question you asked was about why I use email instead of Canvas. And I really don't like the Canvas interface. <laughs> That's I kind of try to avoid it as much as possible. And I tell them to send it to me over email. But, but I also tell them to send it to me with a specific subject line, right? So um, if it's, you know, SIS 205, exit ticket, that's what they put in the subject line. And also what becomes convenient over time is that sometimes, and I think I should probably give this a little bit more kind of explicit instructions to students, but some students just respond to that same email every week, so it's a chain. And I can actually, again, like follow their exit tickets over kind of, you know, the entire semester. Um, the other reason I like exit tickets versus Canvas, or sorry, email versus Canvas, is because it's easier to copy paste. Um, you know, you just copy and paste versus kind of, I think Canvas is a little bit more unwieldy and kind of the when you copy paste over, sometimes the font looks differently and all of those kinds of things. So email is, I think, just in terms of, of uh, my process, um, smoother and easier. And so and then the last point, I think, you know, if you know, if you're teaching a very large class, right, like my student, the the um, the undergraduate course I'm talking about is less than 20. But if you're teaching a, a class with like 30, 40 students, I think using doing it every uh, like half of the class or a third of the class seems to be a great way of still incorporating this practice without necessarily um, without necessarily having to go through, you know, 50 exit tickets every week. Um, but at the same time, I'll just 
you know, if, if you try it out um, and, and you see that it is kind of like useful, I'd love to kind of continue that conversation. So at the end of the workshop today, I want to kind of check in with people about that. So to just keep that in mind, if you might try it out and how you might kind of develop it further. I learned about this assignment from a colleague when I previously taught um, uh, in, in an anthropology department. And so that's what I also find really interesting about this assignment is that it's very flexible for like different, um, you know, different types of learners, different stages of learning within the university. Um, so yeah, any other questions or comments or concerns? Okay. All right, I'm gonna go back to sharing. Okay, so um, just to kind of like go through the beginning a little bit because uh, if anybody else missed the kind of um, what the how the exit ticket is kind of communicated or how students receive it um, from their perspective. So after each class, students email me an exit ticket and they answer two questions. What have you learned today and what are you more curious about? Um, and I just again like th that's kind of at the at the very um, most simplistic level what the assignment is. Um, and as somebody asked, uh, you know, I, I make it worth two points. And it fits into the class in the sense of I drop one exit ticket and it's 25% of the semester. I think previously before I had made office hour visits required, it was 30%, but I thought this way that you can kind of break it up a little bit and, and require office hour visits. Um, this is an example of what the exit ticket looks like um, and kind of how I try to arrange them. And so this is another reason why it's very different from a discussion post in the sense of it's not individuals kind of sharing their thoughts, but it's individuals sharing their thoughts with me such that then I collate them and curate them. Um, so that way then students can kind of see their contribution in relationship to other students' contribution in class. Um, and then I use it from the first day. And so it's uh, something I, I've kind of incorporated in a lot of different ways. Okay, um, quick check-in. Are there any questions right now? Um, it was just a kind of review of the, okay. Um, so now I'm going to move on to the second part. And the second part, I've, I've organized this as kind of <clears throat> my reasons for using the exit tickets. And so I'll kind of go through some of the things that I've already talked about and a little bit more. Um, I use the course norms as a kind of praxis throughout the semester, such that we set it up in the beginning. And then it allows for me at different moments to kind of bring it back in if things go in different directions, such that... Um, you know, something disrespectful was said in a class or in an exit ticket or something happens, then I can kind of bring those course norms back in. And the exit ticket portion of like my course, because I teach three hour, you know, block courses. And so um, it, it gives that kind of like moment for us all to kind of settle together before we get into whatever we're talking about for that day. And so that's also often an opportunity for me to kind of like check in about, you know, other things that are happening in the world that they want to talk about. This is kind of where it comes in. Um, so I'll give a couple of examples and we'll have our second group discussion. And at the end of this part, I'm going to ask everyone to email me their exit tickets based on what we've discussed up until that point. So I just wanted to kind of uh, set up our plan. So here's my growing list of reasons for using exit tickets. Um, I believe it creates more active engagement from all students while still respecting their individual learning journeys. So I find that to be, again, something I've, I've kind of already stated, but it really brings in every student in the class in some very kind of like concrete way into the conversation. And so that's one of the reasons I have, I initially started using it. It facilitates creating a respectful classroom community because it kind of builds account, like it builds a conversation in this very um, anonymized kind of public form from the very beginning. It is always there for us to go back to in terms of like checking in and seeing kind of how how the community conversation is developing. And that's some something that I've I've done in, in previous uh, semesters. Um, I wanted to incorporate ungrading assessments into my courses. Um, I find kind of like, you know, having students do a lot of work and then turn in a final product and then the semester ends and you're not really able to give them feedback such that they can incorporate that, you know, feedback into their future learning. What I love about this assignment is that it builds in that formative assessment throughout the semester such that by the end of the semester, I have a lot of clarity in terms of how students are doing. And to be honest, again, like 
they're able to demonstrate their participation through not only the exit ticket, but also the other assignments in a way that I'm not as um, unsure, for example, of like where students are at the end of the semester. We can have those conversations in the middle, you know, later on in this, uh, before the before finals, but there isn't that level of, of um, uncertainty that I maybe had, you know, in earlier years that I was teaching in terms of how are, how is each student doing in my class. Um, it's very useful to redirect student learning when necessary, and I'll show a couple of examples um, in the next few slides. It allows students to hold me accountable and vice versa. And so I'm going to show a couple of examples of that. Again, you kind of already saw a little bit with um, when I assigned one of my uh, articles and, you know, students asked particular questions in terms of what do you mean when you say this? Um, I think it also demonstrates a decolonial feminist approach to knowledge production that is community that is based on community based learning. Um, I think that's one of the, the kind of larger um, philosophical, I guess, theoretical kind of takeaways for me of, of having done this assignment for so many uh, semesters now and in all of my classes, I have really started to kind of see that, you know, there's ways to demonstrate this, this principle of uh, collective knowledge production in this particular way. And from my own perspective, it helps to keep my discourse uh, analysis skills sharp. So, here are, again, uh, very generic, I think in some ways, course norms and expectations, um, but I just wanted to share them with you all before we got into it. Um, so as a professor, you know, I agree to these things, and one of the things is to engage with any and all questions and to remain open-minded. And so that's something that I, I, I put out for them. And then similarly for them, I ask them, of course, to engage with, with you know, course content, to self-evaluate, and to be considerate of each other's uh, of each other and your their respective learning journeys. And so again, I, I want to build that in as a kind of, um, I think in earlier, uh, you know, um, training that I've been in, you know, I, I was taught that you can think of the syllabus as a contract, but rather than a contract, I think it, it more is, is, a, is a conversation. And so it sets up the terms of, of the engagement from the beginning of the semester, and we can always come back to it and change things or kind of like um, revisit uh, when, when something is not kind of fitting right or, or settling right in class. Um, okay, so this is uh, kind of how I, I've tried to explain my um, exit tickets from previous classes. As you can see on the top left, I've put in when this is from. So this is from week nine in uh, the fall of 2022 in my undergraduate courses. And I'm only using examples from um, the undergrad courses for, for our conversation today. Um, and as you can see, the three uh, exit tickets in the middle are all asking questions about caste. And that's because we had just read about cast um, for that week. And so it gives, again, students an opportunity to clarify, you know, uh, question, to ask clarifying questions. Cast is often a, a brand new topic um, for most of the students when I teach it. And so there's a lot of questions that come up. And so um, one of the ones here, you know, it's, it's, it says, um, does religion play a defining role in caste? Or is it a cor common correlation? Um, another question over here is asking about kind of caste and how it compares to European noble order. And then on the bottom is a question about um, the denaturalization of caste um, that's uh, not only happening, I'm sorry, I'm curious about if the denaturalization of caste can be applied not only to South Asia and college campuses, but to entire societies. Um, and so I bring in, you know, sometimes tweets that I've seen um, that over, you know, are, are kind of collected tweets now for me in terms of teaching around particular topics. And this one over here on the left, I think is very helpful for students in terms of understanding how caste functions um, for those who are uh, from dominant caste perspectives, where this is, you know, uh, Amitabh Bachchan is like a very famous uh, Bollywood actor. And he says this particular thing of like, I don't know my caste or creed, I'm universal. And then on the right is somebody who um, says, you know, from childhood, I've always known my caste because society wouldn't let me forget. And so I use these kinds of, you know, external materials, which add to things that we've read in class, you know, readings, scholarship on caste to help them develop their um, comfort with this topic and make connections to other topics. And so over here, you also see them asking questions about um, caste in relationship to the European noble order. And on the right, I 
brought in um, a tweet from a scholar who talks about, um, you know, tracking tax records from the 1400s to 2011 and how wealth inequality is inherited across 600 years, which of course is just a, a very striking, um, you know, uh, fact. But at the same time, it allows them to see kind of these important connections and to help kind of like make necessary clarifications such that, you know, caste is not about religion as much as it's about kind of systemic inequality built into institutions, right? So that that offers a moment for me to clarify these, these uh, course topics with them. Um, so the next uh, slide <clears throat> is uh, one from the fall of 2023, later in the semester, where you know we're now at the point in the semester where students are more comfortable with each other and they are able to kind of like address each other's exit tickets. <clears throat> so this was um, this over here, as you'll see uh, on the left, is a graphic of a. Um, public health poster that I saw in an uh, emergency room. And I brought in this to the class to show them kind of like how, um, and this is I think from October or November, 2023. So this is like, you know, very recent in terms of um, kind of the, the um, timeline of COVID-19. Um, and on the top right was an exit ticket from a student that says, I see no issue in calling it the Wuhan coronavirus as, as viruses are named after the area in which they're reported and they give a couple of examples. And then another exit ticket the following week from another student addressed this particular exit ticket and said, I was taken back by this and I think context is important. And then they kind of, you know, give an analysis of why why um, it is uh, a problem to call uh, the coronavirus a Wuhan coronavirus or, or any other kind of way of, of connecting it. Um, and as you can see on the very bottom, um, they explain that this might seem like a trivial issue for some, but disease names really do matter to the people who are affected, especially when it comes to kind of, you know, the hate crimes um, that they also quote in this uh, exit ticket. And so this in some ways demonstrates the kind of, um, you know, uh, usefulness of this assignment, the functionality of this assignment in terms of building a classroom community conversation around how we talk about, uh, you know, references to disease names or any other references and kind of develop that analysis over time. Um, so I'm gonna actually just take a quick break uh, just to kind of check in and see how everyone is doing with the material that we've presented thus far, if there are any questions. Um, Yes, Betsy. Sorry, my hand was up before I've been driving. Um, so, uh, Claire, for me, and you might have said this, how much of the, uh, when you give the report to the students about what was in their ticket, their exit ticket, how much of it is written that you give to them? How much of it is oral? Uh, yeah, sort of what, and, and what's your decision making on that? Yeah, I mean, I um, typically uh, don't give written feedback at all. It's just kind of like shows up in terms of their... Um... No, 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 not, not the feedback to them individually, but when you bring it back into the classroom and you say, oh. you know, you know, that this is what you learned from you know, the, the reporting back to the whole class. Right. Um, when I so when I bring it back to the class, it's it's entirely oral. I'm narrating in some in a lot of ways. I'm narrating kind of each slide and how I've arranged it. Um, what are some of the connections that we're going to make um, to things that we're going to talk about that day? Sometimes students do that where they'll bring up something that you know is going to come up that week or the following week, and so I make sure to highlight that. Um, but it's all very oral. It's not. Uh, it's not kind of. Um, it doesn't require more work than I've already done in terms of arranging it. So they don't see the excerpts that you've copied and pasted. They just hear it. No, they see the slides that I'm showing you. So the slides that I'm, 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 I'm. So they know, do see that. They see that. Yes. Okay. Okay. And as you can see, they're just copy pasted. So there's no extra information. There's no kind of like I don't tweak it. Sometimes I even leave like typos and stuff like that unless it's really irritating me. Um, but but I I I for the large part again, it's just a copy paste. But it's more of again like how I'm analyzing it. Sometimes I will, as, as you'll see in the next couple slides, I do highlight something or put it in bold. 
just again, because it's so much text, so I want to make sure that their attention is going to what I want it to go to rather than trying to read the whole slide. Um, so, yeah. So do you use that like as a warm up kind of a thing when you're following that, like a review of the material to jump into more extend, more extension? I yes. mean, okay. Okay. Exactly. What do you do with people who don't turn it in or who do something minimal? I mean, you have a zero and a one, right? Right. So right. I mean, so as long as they answer the two questions, they get two points. And they typically do. I mean, I don't really get a lot of like someone answering only one question and not the other one. They do that because they're both, it's more about how much they write again. So sometimes there are shorter exit tickets, but this is where like I give them a couple of weeks to see how they're kind of like developing their own style. Also when they start to see other people's style. I mean, again, this All is right. where like having it be a collective anonymous assignment gives students the opportunity to see, oh, so-and-so wrote so much or so-and-so did this for their exit ticket. I guess I could do that too. And so you start to kind of see them develop their own style of, of approaching the assignment, but some students do write less, um, you know, or they'll participate more in class. So I try to just, again, keep a sense of who is speaking regularly. Do I need to have a one-on-one -on -one office hour conversation um, with the student and, and kind of go from there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? I'm going to go through a couple more examples. I think I have maybe four more examples, and then we'll do the second discussion. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, all right. I'm going to share the screen again. All right, so like I said, this is, um, you know, this was a way for me to kind of demonstrate how the students kind of like use each other's exit tickets to kind of build on, on their learning. Um, so this is an exit ticket from this past semester. Um, and in this one, I've tried to include a couple of different examples of how I connect their learning or their comments to other um, events on campus, as you can see on the top right, we were talking about intersectionality. And so there's a number of different questions thinking about intersectionality. And there was just so happened that that week, there was an event um, through the Anti-Racism Research and Policy Center on the convergence of prison abolition and reproductive justice. Um, on the bottom left, as you can see, we were having, you know, cast ends up becoming a topic over several weeks, actually. And so sometimes it's a way for, um, for us to continue talking about that topic, even if the readings for that week have moved on to another issue. And so I think this was where um, students were asking about how have caste movements affected caste systems globally. And so I give them a couple of, you know, readings in terms of how caste shows up in Canada and Newark, and then this particular organization that is against, uh, or this coalition of organizations um, that are taking a stand against Hindu supremacy. And then on the bottom right, as you can see, we were talking about um, what's happening right now, which is where Kenyan peacekeepers are being deployed to Haiti through the UN. And so there was a presentation about that. And so then I brought in both a, um, a tweet, but then also a short video about the Mau Mau uprising. And so it becomes again, an opportunity for students to develop their learning, depending on if they're interested. And what's also helpful, I think, is that the exit ticket sometimes help students develop their, um, you know, a, a possible re final project research topic. And so that's also been very um, interesting. So the next uh, slide is uh, addressing questions that students don't say, feel safe addressing publicly and thus facilitating learning in the face of institution-based racism. And so over here, as you can see, I have a couple of exit tickets. On the left, I have an exit ticket from a student that was talking about um, a, you know, a club on campus being put on probation and what has been the involvement from um, you know, outside groups and how can students be more involved. And so here I give both kind of like events that are being held on campus around this issue and then also kind of like outside websites that they can check out and read more about. Um, here on the right, you can see that um, it's an exit ticket where a student in the class had given a presentation about the watermelon as a symbol um, for Palestine. And uh, there was a comment that was brought up about oranges. Um, and I think, uh, as it says over here, there was a comment during the presentation questioning the symbolism of oranges. And then the student wanted to kind of explain that further. Um, she didn't feel comfortable saying it in class. 
but she did send it to me as part of her exit ticket and I incorporated it the following week when I shared it with the class. And so again, this offers a way for students to, to talk about issues facilitated by me in a way that, that doesn't stifle or censor their learning. And I think that is one of the most kind of important takeaways that I have of this assignment. Um, and then over here, as you can see, uh, this is from the fall of 2023. I'm, I, I've been at AU for, for two academic years now. So all the examples I'm pulling are from the last two years. Um, and so this one over here, uh, I wanted to draw your attention to um, the, the exit ticket over here, which starts with the video we watched in class, alleged that unnamed news organizations um, are conspiring to defraud the international community of information. And they, you know, were very critical of this video that I showed in class. And so I, you know, copy pasted the entire exit ticket here. And then I brought in a number of books that address this particular issue and give more examples. Um, and so this again becomes a way for me to, to kind of, uh, you know, build a collective conversation with the students while also making space and, and showing that I'm accountable to them. So when they have a critique of something that was presented, I bring it back into the exit tickets and I discuss it the following week. And as you can see here, I give them a, a lot of readings too, so they can have kind of clarity on what I was trying to communicate the previous week. Um, and then this slide um, is, you know, from the final exit ticket, as I talked about before. So in the undergraduate course, I have the students um, ha send a final kind of analysis of their uh, work over the semester. And in this, I encourage them to look at their exit tickets. And I think it provides a really interesting opportunity for student metacognition. Um, so you can see here on the left, I highlighted um, where the student says, at the beginning, I I was unsure exactly what the point was or what to write, but each week I started looking forward to a more to exit tickets as I was able to reflect upon the sources, lectures, and presentations after each class. So some students would write it immediately after class, some students would write it a few days later, and I, I would give them the flexibility for doing it as long as I had it by like the morning of uh, the, the day before class. Um, and as you can see over here, they they reference it specifically of like, this is what my exit ticket said on September 6th versus November 8th. And then over here on the right, you can see a student says, tracking my exit tickets from the beginning of the semester, there has been a clear shift in focus from reciting ideas and regurgitating my notes to clear critical thinking about the relationship between my lived experience and those of my classmates alongside the learned experience that I was gaining in the class. And so this is kind of one of the main uh, reasons why I have continued to expand my use of the exit ticket in class because I see over time how students kind of pick up the material and use it um, to, to demonstrate their learning. Um, and so I have actually very close to the original guiding question. So this might be a good moment to kind of maybe break off into groups and discuss this further. I'd like to ask you all to kind of discuss your understanding of the exit ticket assignment and its pedagogical utility. It, any questions that you might have um, and how you might use it. So we're gonna get to that in the third part, but I wanted to kind of ask that right now too. So let me um, stop the share and see, I think there's some comments in the chat. Um, would it be better, I think, to break up into two groups or I think we've lost a couple of people and so it might not be. Um, okay, so let's just, let's just uh, stay together and similarly, um, questions about the exit ticket assignment, anything that you've noted so far, anything that is, um, yeah, any comments? Yes, please, Anna. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, have you, do you ever consider using an exit ticket for sort of a, a not necessarily content related purpose? <laughs> Say for example, if you notice that students are disappearing, <laughs> Um, and you just want a general check-in um, sometime during the semester with everyone and ask them to share just how they're doing, keeping up with class work, right. for example. Would that be an appropriate use of this, would you say? I haven't, I, I've tried to keep the exit ticket. I mean, I do like, for example, a mid-course assessment and I have a Google like um, assessment that I've kind of created and I just use that every week. And then that becomes a way of kind of bringing in information and I do it in a similar way. Where like, for okay. example, that mid course ass assessment, I think I have like three questions that they have to answer and then other ones that they can answer. So the first is what's going well for you in this course, what's not going so well for you in this course, 
And like, do you have any other, you know, thoughts? And so then I take that um, and I arrange it similar to the way that I've kind of presented it so far, where there's like um, the, the main question and then copy pasted a bunch of answers. And then I kind mm -hmm. of explain like, this is our plan. Like for the rest of the semester, we're going to change this. Oftentimes I think um, if I have only one break for the first half of the course, the second half, they were like, can we have two breaks and two different, you know? So those become things that then again, I can build into the rest of the semester and, and demonstrate that I'm, I'm, you know, taking their, their feedback into account and kind of adjusting things accordingly. Um, other times I think it's like by the end of the semester, they're really much more interested in more podcasts and that type of thing. So I'll, I'll make sure to adjust things. So that's where I start to tweak, but, but not necessarily through the exit ticket, um, just to kind of keep, some type of um, separation and things don't get too confused, but. That makes sense. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Um, I feel like as a professor, you get used to sitting in awkward silences. Like, <laughs> well, I yes. let me ask this um, because I've always used exit tickets as well. And I was watching this to try to help my university students as they are doing. I'm a practicum professor. So I was watching it to see if I would pick something different up for them to use with secondary students. Um, and it's a different, it's a different ball game really with secondary students because I'm assuming since they're emailing this to you, the university students, they're doing this on their own, whereas the secondary students, a lot of times you got to do them, have them do this right there in class or you're not going to get anything from them. Um, I, I'm, do you have any gems of wisdom in terms of that? And I apologize, I have a cold, so I sound terrible. Um, <laughs> Do you have any gems of wisdom in terms of that for me turning around to help my student teachers get their secondary students to be to buy into this a little bit more? Because um, there's a little core that do, and then mm -hmm. a lot of them that don't. So I'm wondering, I guess, like since it's secondary students, would it, would it be possible to have them write it out before they leave? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. That's a that's what they have to do routinely because it, now, which is fine, but that pulls away <clears throat> from your class time. Mm -hmm. And depending on how long your class is, some, some are an hour and a half, some are 45 minutes. Right. So, you know, that, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I love the exit tickets. And again, like I said, I, I use them a lot. Um, when I taught secondary, I didn't use them as often as you do, mainly because of that issue. Yeah. Because I'm not going to go home and follow through and send it. And so, I imagine it would be different for like ninth and 10th graders versus like 11th and 12th graders, right? right. Again, we're like, yeah, you and, maybe have more expectation from upper class. Right, they're all something. different. They're all different. And if you get AP classes, of course, they're a little more driven, but generally. Um, mm -hmm. But... I don't know, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, cause I, I'm thinking like what you, you, you could kind of like try to incorporate other softwares that are a little bit quicker in terms of like, I, yeah. I actually was gonna incorporate Men Mentimeter um, at the very end, but then that would require setting it up before. The, it's the not nice that thing hard, about this is that. You know, you could, you could. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've enjoyed this because it just solidifies my own feeling about exit tickets and checking. It's a good check for understanding basically. and. I mean, I think it's good. I'm just trying to figure out a way to right. help my students incorporate, right. but yeah. it's fine. It's fine. It was good. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a really, I mean, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's a different challenge given like technology is kind of like, you know, incorporated very differently into secondary education and all of those things. I feel like with the, with email, it is a little bit, for, for example, for students in the beginning of the semester, sometimes it's a little unfamiliar for them, right? Like they actually get right. used to it in some way. There's also building that skills for them of like emailing the professor and kind of constantly being in communication too. Um, I like it though. I like what you, because the discussion board thing, I know people wait and they look at everybody else to post and then they kind of look at what you say and then they, I mean, a lot of people do, not everybody, but yeah. um, this is good because you really are getting an individual read which yeah. I think is really important for equity 
certainly, uh, if nothing else. So, um, you know, but I really like it. it was, this was really good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, any other questions, I guess, um, from other? I was just wondering if you've used always the same prompt, no matter what course you're teaching, because um, I know one of the courses you're teaching is the DIV, um, which is part of AU Core as well. I just wonder about like if the demonstration of the learning outcomes for those types of courses comes through in the exit tickets, or if you sometimes have to prompt that through other assignments or just kind of how that plays out. I mean, I think um, the questions are so general, right? Like you would want to be able to answer those questions almost for anything that you're learning, right? Like, what have you learned? And what is one thing you're more curious about? Hopefully that whatever you've learned has kind of opened up other possibilities of learning. Um, but at the same time, I think that if, it doesn't fit, like, again, from my courses, I'm teaching courses on intercultural and international communication, right? Communication is very much at the center, and so we can use that. But if for a math class, for example, I mean, I imagine that might be a little bit different or um, in terms of applying kind of like learning of, of a particular, you know, scientific kind of facts that, that you're going to incorporate next time. So I would imagine that it's, that those would need to be changed, but I have the kind of, um, I believe that that the questions are are something that kind of connects to any kind of learning conversation um, and gives again like that basic information of what is one thing you got from today. What you know, um, so I'm not I'm not sure if I did much to answer your question, but um, yeah. So I guess I'm curious from from the other professors who are here, like. Uh, Thank you, you know, Nia, for sharing that you've you've already uh, used this. Are there other people who are using similar assignments? Um, are you interested in maybe using it in the future? Hi, I am Gemma. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I use the um, a kind of after class activity in my cinema and literature classes, and yeah, it's a little bit like I think Nia was saying that is not always is not always as good as I would like. I think the idea is wonderful. And sometimes the execution, yeah, is like they are so busy and they don't have time and they are rushing. So I, I give them a week because it's a block class. I give them a week and I always say what the 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 normal the normal sort of thing would be to have to do it uh, before just two days after the class, not just just before the other class. So they do it at the last minute and it's not so effective. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think I totally agree with you in the sense of previous semesters, I think I would tell them they had to submit it by midnight that night, the day of class. But then, you know, sometimes they had work or they had other things and they're like, I won't be able to get back to my computer until then. So I would give them the next day or so. This semester, I was a little too flexible where I let them turn it in until the day before. And so I'm actually going to go back in the fall. I'm going to ask them to have it in within 48 hours of class ending. Um, and I think those kinds of, you know, um, deadlines are key for this assignment to be useful for both the student and the faculty, because as you said, it's if, if they don't send it um, within the next few days, then sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't. Um, it becomes more of, again, a regurgitation of their notes, which is not what I'm looking for, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm gonna try the 48 hours. Let's see how yeah. it works. Thank <laughs> you, yeah, <laughs> thanks. I also used to space it out a little bit, like they knew certain days of the week we were gonna be doing this. I didn't do it all the time, just mm. certain times. Uh, it depends on your class. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think because I teach block classes, this gives me more like weekly interaction with the students, right? Versus if I didn't have this, then I would, I would some of some of them I would only see, and sometimes I wouldn't see them, right? If they miss class, and I wouldn't see them for two weeks or something. So this way, like they have to send, they have to interact um, with me at some point about the readings or about the class if they attended it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna, I guess I'll, I'm, I'd like to um, go back into the slides, but at the same time, I think the rest of the presentation is, is more, um, it's more of a kind of doing it together. Um, so let me 
So time to experience the exit tickets. So please answer the following. What have you learned and what are you more curious about? And I'd like you to email me. Um, here's my email right there. And then we'll take, since it's a smaller group, maybe we'll just take like a 10 minute break. Um, but let's, uh, let's uh, kind of practice it out for, for those for whom this might be new. You could also just direct message me. You don't have to email me. <laughs> you can just direct message me right here and I'll use that. Um, so exactly, I can, let me copy paste into the chat. And that way we have it. So if everyone can just direct message me, I think that would probably be the smoothest way to do this right now. I think I almost have everyone. Is there anyone still writing? Okay, I'll wait a few. I'm going to continue to develop it. Let's just take a, let's say till 4, um, 25. So I can kind of uh, curate uh, everyone's exit tickets and then we'll, uh, I'll show my face again at 425.
Hi everyone. I think I got I think I got a um a format that I would like to share with you all. So I'm gonna is everyone back? Quick check in. You want to just raise your hand or great, awesome. Cool. All right, so let me share what I have so far. Okay. So I tried to set it up based on kind of answers to part one and answers to question one and answers to question two a little bit, because I do think that um, substantively they were a little bit different. Um, and so this over here, um, I wanted to put kind of the exit tickets that, that um, explicitly refer to how we talked about, how I talked about um, feminism and decolonial feminism as a lens for thinking about this assignment. Um, I appreciated that. So I'm glad that that kind of uh, was was a, uh, connected with, with you all. Um, and then on the left, you have kind of, you know, more, more broadly of like how to kind of get um, continuous engagement from all students and provide a safe space. Um, and I also really appreciated this uh, exit ticket that, you know, other faculty do similar kinds of assignments without necessarily using the exit tickets to build uh, an ongoing conversation. So that's interesting. I'd love to talk more with faculty who are doing that and how, um, what they are getting out of, of using the assignment and, and how that could be tweaked a little bit um, in, in different directions. And I do think that sharing selected quotes um, tends to to create this kind of like hierarchy in the class of like who who is the professor really noticing and and everyone else versus I think with the way that I've tried to develop and um, expand this assignment is that everyone feels like their perspectives are being addressed even though I make it a point to address and clarify if something was uh, you know uh, misinterpreted the previous week and not necessarily to um, again like individually kind of identify the student who said it and, and kind of, you know, make it about them, but more broadly about this is a misunderstanding that could have happened. So let me take the opportunity to address this misunderstanding. Um, and then the next uh, slide, I tried to kind of like group comments that um, were kind of thinking further about the exit ticket and, and using it in different contexts. And so a number of you, you know, brought this up, like how might this work in a larger class? Um, how to give feedback. Um, and again, the way that I'm demonstrating it to you right now, hopefully is, is a way to kind of see that it doesn't require too much extra work. The work is the copy pasting and the arranging and kind of making sure that you're able to kind of make some of those connections. And today, as you can see, I, I tried to use highlight and bold as a way to kind of like emphasize particular points. Um, and so, yeah, these other two exit tickets are, are asking of like how to, um, use it in different modalities, um, using it with online master's courses, which I definitely think would be, um, you know, it's, it's different in terms of, of that kind of uh, in, inner engagement that you can have when you're kind of more face-to-face -face versus kind of like online. But at the same time, it might, again, foster the ability for students to kind of use email as a way to communicate rather than necessarily like the the zoom kind of interface um i'm curious if that would be helpful um and then uh this last one over here uh as mia said before you know I, i'm curious how somebody might develop this more for secondary students but i imagine it is very much dependent on what technologies and what materials um the students and teacher have uh, for that particular context so i'm going to stop sharing now and uh, check in with everyone in terms of how did that go? How did you feel about that um, experience? Was there anything striking to you um, about how I picked up your exit ticket and used it? Um, yeah. I like it. I'm gonna suggest it um, to my students um, to use in their teaching. I, I really liked that you grabbed it and we talked about it right away. I think it's a very effective technique. So thank you. Like As it. you can see, that it wasn't too much work. What? It wasn't too much work. I mean, no, it was, and no, it was very and focused. They're all but... up into that. They're, that's going to appeal to them a lot. So, no. um, I, but I mean, I it was a good takeaway. I think this is a great takeaway. Cool. Thank you. Um, Anna? Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, one thing that has struck me and when I do 
like similar things with my students where they are seen in some way um, by the rest of the class. I have, I have them actually submit the word clouds of their final papers, for example, and then I display those word clouds, clouds as a way to celebrate their work. And I can see, and I felt it myself, like when you see something on the screen that you contributed, not anonymously per se, but, but not in front of the rest of the class, I think it has a really powerful effect for the students. Um, so I, I think that's one thing I would probably add to my own list is to, to make sure that I bring in all of them at some point during the semester to, to track like who I highlighted basically, just to make sure that they get to feel that feeling. Yeah, thank you so much. And yes, you're right. It's not really anonymous, but it's confidential. I guess that's the right word. It's it's confidential between me and them. And I think, again, like that allows for um, a, possibilities of learning that maybe otherwise they would feel inhibited to, to go into. Other other uh, audience members who might want to share how that went? I would take that as a positive. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. Thanks for the question, Catherine. Can you give a little bit of an example of what, for example, what are you thinking um, that can't be adjusted? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I've had terrible audio today, so I was typing, but it might be faster just to, for example, I taught an 8 a.m. class and all the students hated that it was at 8 a.m. Um, so I attempted to adjust things like, okay, I won't have your assignments due at 8 a.m. I'll have them due at this, you know, I tried to work around things, but there are certain things in every course you can't change and adjust. Um, a lot of adjunct instructors inherit syllabi and they need to teach that curriculum. Um, uh, teacher certification, things like that. There are aspects of it that you have to teach. And so how do you communicate with your students to say, you know, be transparent um, with your students, but also acknowledge the fact that some of the things that they may be giving you feedback about are things that cannot change in the course. Right. I mean, I think, um, so with the exit ticket assignment, typically the feedback stays really focused on course material, classroom discussion, right? Like in that way. But I think if students are giving feedback that's kind of outside of that, you know, outside of what the professor has control over, um, I would say this is where like the course norms becomes a way of, again, like bringing that back as a, you know, if you, if you, if you do the exit ticket and students say something like, this class is way too early, right? Um, you could bring in the course norms and kind of again set up that this is this is what I have control over. This particular concern that you're raising is something that I don't have control over. So let's either, you know, have a one on one conversation about like how you can manage the schedule for the next few weeks or or whatever it may be. Right. Like it, 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 it sometimes students do send things over exit tickets that I don't share on as part of like the next week's slides because it actually needs they they're just asking for something where they need me to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes students share exit tickets where they'll share something very personal and then they'll specifically say, don't share this. And so that's where I'll definitely email them back and say, thanks for sharing this with me. You know, let's set up a time to talk. So if the exit tickets become a, become a, a site for them to kind of express concerns that are not in your control, but nonetheless, you want to kind of like make sure that you're addressing it in some capacity, even if it's just to say, I don't have control over that. Um, I think you can always kind of use that as a way to kind of set up a one-on-one -on -one afterward and say like, hey, like, you know, you raised this issue, let's talk about it. So I hope that kind of answers uh, your your question. Great. Um, but yeah, I think, I think having kind of clear um, responsibilities kind of laid out at the beginning of the semester also does sometimes that work at a later moment in the semester when that's not clear to them for some reason that you can kind of be like, okay, let's clarify how does how does the classroom function? What's my role here? What's your role here? And and go from there. And I've definitely, for example, had, I mean, just to kind of again share another example with you all, where um sometimes it's not necessarily using the exit ticket, but the exit ticket portion of the class, where like, for example, I think. We were talking about some issue in the fall and, you know, um, 
it's been obviously a, a very kind of tense time for a lot of us uh, as we're kind of like, you know, uh, processing world events and trying to understand how to make sense of it. And students are, of course, in the same situation and, and even more so because they're students. So they're, there's there's a lot. Right. And so I think um, a student specifically called me out during the exit ticket period and said, I feel like you're not really presenting all the perspectives that we could be talking about. And um, I talked about it a little bit in that moment where I, you know, said, well, what kind of perspectives are missing from this conversation? What do you think? And then I actually opened it up to the rest of the class. So it did, it wasn't this kind of like one-on-one -on -one between me and the student who was trying to kind of, you know, critique me in the public way, but to actually say, all right, well, you're, you know, in the class and there's all these other students here. So let's get their feedback and let's like have this as a community conversation rather than an opportunity for you to kind of like directly, you know, come at me in, in front of students. Um, and I think especially, I mean, it seems like everyone in this uh, um, meeting is is a woman. So as we know, there are particular challenges that come sometimes um, being a woman professor, being a woman of color professor, and, and how do you kind of navigate those moments? And I think the exit ticket from my perspective actually gives me a sense of safety where everything is kind of documented in terms of how students are learning, how they're engaging with readings. And at a later point, if concerns come up, I can use those exit tickets to say, this is what you said at this moment, let's talk about this again. Did you mean something else, right? Like, so it doesn't become antagonistic, but it becomes about their learning. And you can always center their learning by referring to their assignments and to referring to their, um, you know, what they've contributed to the class rather than making it all about the professor and what they have, have or have not done. So in that way, I also feel like the exit ticket has these kinds of feminist kind of like, um, principles kind of built in that you can kind of develop further depending on how you narrate and share it with your students. Any other questions? Well, thank you all so much um, for your attention and for, uh, you know, visiting this workshop today. This is my first CTRL workshop, so this was really fun for me. I didn't know exactly how it would go, but this has been so interesting to hear kind of how you all are, are thinking about this assignment in your own classes and how you might want to use it moving forward. So I guess my last question um, to all of you is if you are going to be using this moving forward or, div or if you've already been using it, but you might kind of tweak it or do certain things with it. I, as part of my um, fellowship with CTRL as an inclusive pedagogy fellow, one of the things that I wanted to do was possibly connect with the professors who are using it in the fall to have a faculty learning community where we kind of think about using the assignment. So if that's something that you're interested in, please um, share that in the chat or let me know and I can kind of follow up over email. Um, and set up maybe a conversation for sometime in August. We don't have to think about it right now. <laughs> but... Yes, Catherine? Hey, um, I have one more question, but if people need to head out, that's totally no, no, fine. No, um, <laughs> uh, so you referenced the fact that tensions have been quite high between um, between the university and students, between students of different groups, um, and so I'm wondering if you have any experience with or suggestions for kind of mitigating some of that conflict. Um, for example, I have a group assignment that is part of um, my, their final grade and every semester, it just devolves into like, I don't wanna work with this person or I do wanna work with this person. I'm mad that I don't get to work with this person. And it just becomes like a giant, like high school, you know, gossip kind of fest thing. Um, so I've done lots of norm building and I start at the first day and we talk about how this is just one component of their grade. And we talk about, you know, our responsibilities to one another as group members, but I noticed increased tension in terms of, I absolutely do not wanna work with this person. I don't feel safe working with this person. Um, and so I added a lot more work on me as the instructor to try to coordinate group assignments. And so if you have any insights into that and how to utilize exit tickets to help with some of that uh, load on the instructor, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, no, they, thank you. That's a, um, can I ask a few more questions about the group assignment? Sure. 
Go for so, it. Um, so what class is this, I guess? And like, what is your process for setting up the assignment? And how do they have like a check-in meeting or a group meeting or something or? Yeah, so it is a require, I work uh, in SPA and I, it is a public management course and it is a requirement actually of the higher level public management courses that they do a group assignment um, to prepare them for their capstone assignment um, as master students. Um, and also it's also a, a high, heavily recommended component of undergraduate assignments as well to prepare them for careers in public service in which you will be working with diverse stakeholders um, and partners. And so that's kind of the background on why I included it all, <laughs> mm -hmm. since it is every semester kind of like a headache. Um, the second part of it to kind of mitigate some of these challenges that I've encountered, I make sure to scaffold it so that it is throughout the entire semester um, and that they can build relationships with their group members. Um, that has some positive and negative effects. They can build relationships with their group members, but they can also start to have fights with their group members. Um, and how big are the groups? They're like four, three or four mm -hmm. students. Yeah, that's when it gets a little tricky when you get to four sometimes. Yes. Um, um, and are there assigned roles for the group? As yep. Like work? Yep. So I have them work together. Um, to assign roles to each of the people because the number one complaint is I'm mad because I'm doing all the work and my group members aren't doing all the work. Mm -hmm. um, so there are assigned roles and different assigned roles turn in different components of the project. So that also makes it pretty easy to identify if say the like outline person didn't turn in the outline. Well, obviously, you know. Right, right. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, Sorry, I don't want to get too like, because I'm sure there's there's a lot that you've built in to kind of make sure that the students have structure as they're kind of going into it. But I, that that tells me that you're building in a lot of structure, right? And and there still is something kind of like missing. I mean, I, I'm wondering like how to use the exit ticket assignment to address some of that. I mean, I guess you could kind of build in exit ticket questions at particular weeks where you're going to have like a group um, like there, there's something that they need to do as part of that group assignment where they have to address kind of like, do you feel that you're contributing to the group assignment <laughs> or something like that, right? Like some type of like questions that specifically preemptively try to pull out how they're approaching doing group work such that if an issue comes up, you can either have like a one-on-one -on -one with that person or you could have a group conversation, but tell them beforehand that I'm going to share what some of, what was shared as part of the exit ticket around the group project, right? Like those could be some of the ways to to I think preemptively would be the a preemptive use would be the best way of kind of addressing that because once they've already decided that they don't like someone or they don't want to work with someone, then now you have to deal with that. But to kind of how to build in some of those. Um, those those kind of like chains such that they have to kind of um individually say like i commit to uh working with my group and reaching out if any issues come up or something like that right where and that and you have those all of that in email so then again you can kind of go back to that if issues come up would that in some ways address your question yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, they have like an end of semester kind of evaluation of your group members, but I think, you know, I think it would be good to check in earlier. So I appreciate that suggestion. Yeah, Thanks. I mean, not check in, but also like some kind of like, what do you commit to doing, right? Like they have to articulate what they're committing to. So that way then later, if they don't do that, then you can kind of go back and be like, hey, listen, like we checked in about this, et cetera. Um, but yeah, that sounds like a very intense assignment. <laughs> so I can imagine there being a lot of issues that come up over time. Yeah, it can be hard to decide, you know, I want to downplay that it's it's less of a percentage of their grade. Um, and I do all of the adjustments I can think to help kind of mitigate right. it based on student feedback. Um, but it is a requirement of the course and I'm transparent with them about that. <laughs> Uh, there's there's no getting out of it. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a good idea to keep checking in um, and to have that kind of I'm quoting Emma, you're quoting contract um, 
group group contract at the different roles so yeah I mean especially I think with that example I think a contract approach is good because they are in a sense like again agreeing to doing a project together and everyone should reckon I mean in some ways it's like setting up the course norms but like for the group like what are your group norms um you know that might be another way of like going about it rather than the contract I guess but like just to be like this is what the expectation is yeah I see some people uh, shared that they'd like to connect with uh, as a uh, faculty learning community. So that's awesome. I see Gemma and Rebecca and Nia. Um, if anybody else, uh, Rachel, I see that you said restorative circles. Was that, we can kind of build that in. Would that be something that you're interested in kind of doing as part of the FLC? Yeah, I I am not, I'm not faculty. I'm, I'm staff. I, um, I'm a senior instructional designer and I usually support um, the School of Education. But in February, I had an opportunity to get trained on restorative practices and restorative circles. Um, so you kind of, it's very similar to the exit ticket, exit ticket topic um, in terms of, you know, you're starting with a, you're starting with a question and you're ending with a question and you're kind of also focusing on what are our norms. Um, and that takes a very, it takes a lot of work and basically building it into like a, a practice. Um, so yeah, I would, I would be happy to be involved. Um, I would be happy to train others or provide resources. Um, so yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. And that's also speaking to Catherine's question of like kind of how to deal with those moments in class when, when things are a little tense. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I, I guess I think we're we're then at the end. Is that right, Anna? Or Katrine, sorry. Oh, yeah. Let me just share. I'm gonna just share the, the evaluation link so people can just like press on the link or they can also scan the code here. Um, we really appreciate your feedback. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who came. I really appreciate it. And please reach out. Um, we can connect over email if you have other questions or would like to discuss further. Thank you so much, Mariam. Thank you. Thank you. So. So I guess I, I'll just jot the names and then that's, is there any other, I guess, steps that uh, I need to do? I don't think so necessarily. I just wanted to take an opportunity to say hi because we haven't yeah. had a chance to see it. And um, yeah, I know that you're, you're staying for another year, right? As an IP fellow. So I, I look forward to creating some more community among all of the, the faculty fellows as, as part of my new role in CTRL. So I will have some a lunch probably in the early fall and, and um, look forward to connecting. That would be great. But thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, the no, same thing. I think I've had, I've gotten so many emails from you over the last year. So it's really oh. nice to, to yeah. you know, have a, a real conversation <laughs> with you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to, uh, you know, develop this further. I, I, I find it to be very useful. So I would yeah. love to kind of um, especially, I mean, again, like I said, given everything that's happening, like it's a really nice way for students, I think, to, to kind of feel like they can ask questions, um, yeah, and, and not feel like kind of, you know, uh, individually, like, you know, um, seen in a way that they don't want. Yeah, no, that's good. And they get credit for it towards participation. Yes, exactly. Good too, so. <laughs> that's the way to make sure they do it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. I look forward to seeing you in person at some point and uh, yes. chatting more. Take Absolutely. care. Take Bye. care. Thank you. Have a good one.